folks, welcome back to Return to the Wild, and today we're operating the Aero Alaska 1900, yeah, turboprop and me, this is quite a surprise, right? We are flying out of Golkana, Alaska, and we're heading down to Cordova Smith, a place we know quite well. Um, winds and destination about 20 knots or so, so it's not exactly calm, but we're expecting a fairly mild day so far. So, we're going to get ourselves underway, passengers are all about boarded, cargo is being finalized we're getting the doors shut up and we're gonna get ourselves powered on and ready for engine start so i need to get myself sorted with this where are our lights and i will get those all turned on oh we'll just go up here okay so we want to have our nav lights are on our condition lights are on Where's my beacon? I need to get those turned on. Beacon is on to ground setting. Okay. Uh, strobes are off for now. Okay, fantastic. So we are ready and on. The electrical system is operating. So we're going to RAC bus on. Uh, we'll hook external power for the time being whilst we need to boot up the system. We'll turn avionics off. And we've got our fuel in. Throttles back to neutral. We'll set the condition halfway. And I'm not a turboprop person. I just about know how to start a turboprop. Not that experienced with them. So we're going to do our best here. Um, okay, so we've got our engine starters here. Apparently it's an auto ignition system. I can't see it from here, but I'm assuming it's winding up. It is. Oh, hello. No. Nah. Brakes. No. Forgot they surge when they start. Engine two. Wait for the turbine to come up. Okay, power's coming on. And I believe we are in... Yeah, the early surge of the engine has calmed down. Okay, so that is good to go. We'll close that. Avionics are on. Bus is inverted. External power is off. Okay. Uh, those are set to the correct setting. Auto feathers off. Ignitions are on. Okay, I can turn the ignitions off. We'll engage our auto feather, which is in one of these ones here. I'm pretty positive. Auto feather's armed, and that is prop governor test. Okay, we don't need that. So, go away, funny lights. We are okay. Those are all things that should be set. Okay, so where's my radio? I need Cordova Smith's frequency. We'll turn that on as well while we're here. I'm going to use pop-ups are a lot easier to do this stuff with than looking around the cabin. That's not what I was looking for. Oh, no, it's on here. Never mind. We'll just pop it up. Okay, so... You know, the one thing I didn't actually look up was Cordova Smith. The uh, Gul Gulkana's tower frequency, which I probably should have done. Oh, no. Here we go. We are in one... I did have it. I was being stupid. Once I find the relevant click spot, that was the one. Golkana traffic. Error November 971 Echo Alpha is taxiing for departure. Uh, it's going to be straight out runway 6. Okay, so we're ready to rock and roll. Nav lights are engaged. Beacons engaged. Ground operating landing lights are on. Taxi lights are on as well. And I think we're ready to turn. Although we are in a very tight spot here, so let's use one of the nice features of a turbo prop, shall we? Not exactly what you should be doing, but we're going to do it anyway. Come on, take me backwards. That's what I wanted. 
or not. Okay, let's hope these engines will do what I'm asking of them. That's grass, but we've not got a lot of room. <laughs> not the best start, and I hate turbo props. Condition about half, so we don't get too much thrust surging from the engines. Yeah, we were backed into a place there, and we couldn't exactly get a pushback to get out of that spot, so we had to do what we had to do. Come on, give me some power. That's what we wanted. There we go. That's more like it. Yeah, this thing is a little bit of a pig on small taxiways. Especially with this much thrust. Okay, so we're going to back taxi for... Uh, Gonna be 32, I think. I said six. I was getting it wrong way around. One hour growl for uh, entering 14:32 for back taxi uh, departure 32. Okay, let's get this thing down to the end. We'll get ourselves turned around, and we can get out of here. And get ourselves running off to Cordova. Now, this one's going to be a bit more of a fun flight because I've actually told the simulator, Prepare3D, to give me a random failure at some point during this flight. What it's going to be, I have no idea. I've said it, random failure at some point after the first 10 minutes in the air. So, we're already approaching 6 minutes. So, from once we're airborne, there'll be something that happens at some point during the flight. And we're not going to know about it. Okay, there we go. Error 1 Echo Alpha is going to be departing runway 32. Departure to the north. Okay, we're on full power. Oh boy, this thing sachets. Probably shouldn't be taking off on full thrust, but again, I'm not a turboprop person, so... Yeah. Trim. Trim, 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 trim. Trim, 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 trim. Come on, nose down. Nose down. And it's definitely windy up here. There we go. Gear coming up. Flaps coming up. And we are going to turn on routes, which is going to be on a course of 179, I believe. Yeah, we're coming through to 179. There we go. I might be braining today. We might have just come off on 14. I'm pretty positive we didn't, though. There we go. Rolling onto Axis. And this is one of those flights where I will be using autopilot because we are actually operating on a different schedule. We're an airliner at this point, technically. Our cruise altitude calculated by the terrain around us is going to be 12,000 feet. That's what our flight plan stated. Although we are technically a VFR flight, not IFR. So that's 12,000 set. Uh, I'm going to set us into GPS hold because we have our whole flight plan programmed into there, including VORs. I'll be setting those anyway just for kind of cross comparison. So autopilot engaged, climb mode engaged, nav hold selected, your damper engaged. And now we're back. I'm going to roll the engines down from initial takeoff power into our climb setting. Drop the torque back into reasonable range drop our prop RPM. We'll bring the condition back as well so we are good there. And we are climbing out. So based on my chart we are going to have our nav frequency set at 115.6 which I should have done on the ground because you know. Uh, 
How do I move the cursor? There we go. 0.6. There we go. And the big ring. It's much easier to do there somehow. And we should pick it up there. Okay. And we're looking for 176. Now I believe that'll actually be on the autopilot panel that we set that one. Or it's not. Again, not too familiar with this aircraft, but... No, that's lighting. I should really know more about the plane I'm flying before I do it. That's definitely most likely a thing. Oh, we've got to turn prop sync on. I don't fly turboprops. I'm doing my best here. Yeah, there's probably a switch somewhere that I should be diddling. Am I sure it's not on here? No, those are definitely not the, the, the dials I should be fiddling. Pretty positive. Coming to six and a half thousand feet right now. This thing climbs like a beast. I mean, we're doing 250 knots right now. We've got 25 minutes to our destination. Either way, we're on track. So our general course, if we look at this, is going to be to the Johnson Point VOR. And then we turn to 068 degrees to take us to Cordova Smith, where there is an NDB. We'll be dialing into 404. And we should be good to go from there. Now, I will set that for our arrival. In fact, I'll set the alternate frequency on the autopilot for our Johnson Point. One one six point seven. So those are ready to switch over Johnson Point and the other one. Uh, whilst we're here, we need four oh four in the ADF. Oh, it wants to be weird without it actually gives you the click points. That's useful. So we're set to ADF mode. And that should be us set in there. Uh, 9,200 feet. Climb is looking good. We're a little bit choppy still. It's 22 knots from uh, 310 is our expected weather on arrival. So not unlikely that we'll get a quite a bit of chop on the flight in. As for some reason the sound doesn't catch up with the exterior of the plane. Because P3D, there we go. That is incredibly loud. We don't like that. So everything is looking dialed here. Our course is set. Pretty sure there should be a great big knob to control that one. Haven't found it. This is confidence inspiring, isn't it, in your pilot? That there's about to be a failure at some point during this whole flight, and I have no freaking idea what it is. I'll handle it, though. Don't worry. That bit I've got is just the specifics of the 1900 or something I'm not quite fluent on yet. I know enough to operate it, I know my operating speeds, I know my uh, single engine operation speeds, and I know my never exceed speeds, I know how to navigate, and I know how to take off and land. It's just the nuances of every switching button. Oh, dirty. Ah. Whew. That scared me. Turns out it's just the altitude 1000 horn. What is the red light? Cabin differential. Oh yeah, forgot to do the oxygen thing. All right, altitude goal. Yeah, I'll just probably set an altitude for it. We'll set five thousand. 
Yeah, that should do it. Shut up in the back. I don't care. You've got pressure now. Be quiet. You've got oxygen. Okay, so we're locked in now at about a 12,000 feet, which is our cruise altitude. You should see the mountains just ahead of us there. Pop up in our seat. We'll see some beautiful scenery on the way through. And I'll find the uh, rest of the information I'm looking for at this point. We should have everything we need to do. Okay, so all looking good there. Expected time is going to be about 18 minutes now to take us into Cordova. Trying to find my tower frequency for arrival. Merrill K or Mudhole Smith Airport in Alaska. Oh, it's getting choppy here. Let's get our frequency, shall we? Okay, we've got that information. It's getting very, very windy. Visibility is 10 miles at Cordova right now. Okay, so 112.6. So we're going for... We'll stay on Gokana for now. Getting very windy sounding. I think we're about 275 knots right now as we head towards the mountains. Wow, the wind's howling out there. That is really loud, I've got to say. Probably the loudest it's been for me uh, in one of these flights. We've got a mild grassy hills below us as it comes up into the beautiful ranges. The Chugach Mountains just here to the south of us. Oh, yeah, the south literally as we're heading south towards the Gulf of Alaska. Yeah, definitely getting choppy there. So we've got tower till 5.30 in the evening at Cordova should be fairly easy. Looks like our current meter is looking at uh, 22 knots from 310. Clouds at 10,000 scattered. Few at 20,000. Altitude is going to be 3002. So we may not have counted, calculated for that uh, altitude. Come on, let's go. 3002. Local airport uh, barometric pressure, so we need to account for that. 
it's over 600 feet above where the autopilot wants to put us, so we're going to just calculate for that as we're VFR right now. I mean, we'll have to climb through till 13. Wow, look at that down there. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And it's windy as all heck. Do our instrument scan. Uh, all pressures are both looking good. Fuel flow is looking good about 460 per side. Turbine RPM 95, 95. Looking a little bit hot there. We'll dial it back for Chris. Torque is good, prop RPM is good, and temperatures are good. 672. We are looking absolutely dandy. Maybe nothing is going to go wrong. Maybe something already has gone wrong, and that rustling wind noise means a small piece of metal has fallen off the plane. And uh, we're actually going to be fine. Yeah, we should be fine, right? I mean, what's one hole amongst friends? That sounded wrong. No, we're not saying that. That's bad. I did not mean it that way. Tick back seeds exist. Okay. Looking good. 270 knots right now. 10 minutes to Johnson Point. And our next uh, point of arrival. Which means Cordova Smith should be somewhere there, basically. We're not too far away at all. Everything going great, in fact. I think we should go back in the cabin and have a look around. I always love doing this in uh, in planes. There we go. Hey, we're in the cabin. Look at that. Oh, God. What's that? Oh, crap. That's engine two fire. Okay. Uh, four. Autopilot, your damp is off. Nav and alt is off. Fire is pulled, fuel is pulled, engine is set to cut off. Okay, we need to switch frequencies now. Cut over to Smith Tower, cut over to Smith Tower. This is November 971 Echo Alpha. Uh, pan, 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 pan. We've lost engine number two. Fire on the aircraft. Okay, the fuel valve is closed. Uh, oh crap, this is hard for one person to manage. Um, pumps are set to avoid that engine. We're good to go there. Feather that engine for us. Oh Jesus, come on, hold on. Okay, yeah, 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 shut up. Okay, yeah, 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 thank you. Caution, go away. Okay, we're actually going to have to come down a little bit sooner than this. And it's not feathering. That is... Uh, crap. Okay, crap. I need to use the magical flight sim facility with this one because my engine is... Auto feathers enabled and that engine is not feathering. So I'm getting massive torque from it. What the hell's happened to that engine? Okay, have to use the flight sim facility. Where is it? Come on. Newest airport list. Valdez, we're going to land at Valdez. Okay, uh, runway for landing. We're going to take runway. What's our current heading? Uh, six is to be behind us, so we'll take one, uh, two, and two. We'll announce our position. So it's uh, one echo alpha, two miles west, 11,400, about to land runway six, uh, Valdez Pioneer Airport. What's our weather systems? We'll get the things. Because my co pilot will be doing this. 
Okay. This was more than I expected from this. Uh, okay, fantastic. Okay, thank you. Now go away. I need to descend now and focus on getting it down on the ground. Because my engine is not feathering, even though I've told it to feather. Turn off prop sync. And fuel is cut off. Why are you not cutting off? You should be cut off. Okay, this is strange. Is it? No, it's not shut down yet. Because apparently it doesn't want to even bother feathering. You know, told it to, to do that. Auto feathers off. Are you going to bother feathering? Still got RPM from that propeller, which is not what I'm expecting it to do. Also, altitude 8,700. Valdez Pioneer traffic, Valdez Pioneer traffic, November 971, Echo Alpha. Uh, it's going to be declaring an emergency this time. We're making straight in runway 6. We are approximately 4 miles out, uh, coming through 8,000, uh, about to make our turn for Richard Airfield. Engine to fire extinguished. Uh, the engine is not feathering. Uh, aircraft is not handling correctly. Okay, we've got mountains off to that side. We need to be careful of. I have to keep my throttles basically closed, which is giving me the horn warning idiocy from my... Your gear's not down warning, which I don't care about right now because I've got bigger issues, like a plane that's getting a lot of drag off the right wing because it will not power back and I'm going to have to put power on at some point to land this pig which means it's going to become very unstable on landing approach with left engine operating only so I can only use half power at most okay we are descending at approximately 2,000 feet per minute Ladies and gentlemen, it's the captain speaking. Uh, we're about to prepare for landing at uh, Valdez Pioneer Airport. We're landing a little bit sooner than you expected. We have an aircraft uh, engine on fire on the aircraft. Uh, the fire is now out at this time. But just for your own safety, we're going to make our approach now to Valdez Pioneer and put the aircraft down to get checked over. And we're going to arrange a secondary flight to get you folks back there. This plane is perfectly capable of flying on one engine, uh, even if your captain isn't. And we should be on the ground in approximately two minutes. So... Uh, just follow the directions of the crew on board. And, uh, well, but you wish you had Nigel with you. Okay, I can see Valdez ahead of me. 4,000 feet. Airport should be on our 12. This is not behaving very well. There's the lights. I can see the lights. Why won't that thing feather? And that's not doing its thing for some reason. Ah, uh, come on. Come on, you can do this. I need to put some power in here, otherwise I'm going to sink too much. And this is where it's going to get shifty, so kick some rudder in to try and keep us flying straight. The bubble in the middle even though I'm trying to apply engine power to a plane that doesn't want to fly straight watch this I apply full power and round we go yeah not a thing I can do I can't afford to fly on much power with this prop not feathering so I'm gonna have to manage it with almost full rudder right now come on oh airport in sight runway in sight Valdez traffic one Echo Alpha. We're on final approach runway in sight, approximately uh, two miles out this time. On final. Gear. Nose is down, locked. Left and right mains down and locked. Give me flaps uh, to stage. 
Okay, I'm off to the right hand side. We've got a wins from 310. Da. Come on, full rudder, kick over, please. Let me line up with this runway. Come on. Come on. No, oh, power, 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 power. I need to give power. I'm stalling. I need power. But it's going to do this to me. Oh, I'm full controls over. I need engine power here. Otherwise, we're not going to make this down. I am literally, my rudder, right, left foot is kicked over hard on the pedal to the stops. And my controls are to the left 90 degrees. I mean, take a look at the aircraft. That's my rudder over right now. Yeah, it's not great. We're going to make this though. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Speaker. It's going to be a little hard landing than we expected, but there shouldn't be any real problems. Uh, just uh, please follow the instructions of the cabin crew and everything will be fine. I say cabin crew. It's Dave from accounting who's uh, helping out on this flight. And I bet he wish he hasn't. Okay, so bring flaps in one notch. We're going to have to do this a little faster. Throttling back. Okay. 500. Bring a bit of power in. Thank you for that. Come on. Come on. Fight. Come on. This is so unstable with that engine not feathering. Come on, you pig. Come on. <sighs> Come on. Come on. Don't do this to me. We're getting this thing down. We're getting this thing down. If it's the last thing I do, we're getting this thing down. I'm almost full throttling this onto the runway. Kill power. Straighten it out. We're gliding. Oh, we're down. Ah. Whew. Oh my god. I forgot enough engine powders to get us off the runway. Yes, I do. Apparently, this is about all we're going to get today with this. No, we're going to try and get it down to the fire station there, get them to look at this engine. And welcome, welcome to Valdez Pioneer Airport here in Valdez, Alaska. It's beautiful oil country and uh, I do apologize for taking out any fillings you may have had or may have once had in your heads after that landing. But uh, we're now safely on the ground and this airplane might be staying here for some time. So we're going to have a uh, another carrier from the, uh, another aircraft from the, uh, the fleet heading this way to pick you folks up and take you on to Cordova Smith so uh, yeah we're we'll gonna taxi over now to the fire station get those guys just to check out our right engine and you guys will be on your way in no time so uh, thank you flying Air Alaska Whoo! that was a clencher Rudy um, yeah multiple things went wrong there and I don't I must have had some serious damage in that engine for it to not feather okay this will do parking brakes enabled fuel is cut aircraft is shut down was hairy wasn't it yeah and now it decides to stop <gasps> oh man um yeah that was a bit more dramatic than i expected um i think i did a reasonable job not being too familiar with the 1900 um whilst i've read its emergency procedures and i followed them i wasn't expecting a prop not to actually respond i don't know what actually happened in that engine fire but engine number two caught fire and it would not feather 
so I had a lot of drag on that side of the aircraft that I couldn't get rid of, which meant that the aircraft was behaving in a very asymmetric way once we got it uh, down to lower speeds, and I was bleeding speed very heavily because of that factor, so I better let the passengers off, I think, don't you? But, uh, yeah, so, um, don't think I did a bad job, considering I've never dealt with an emergency in a Beach 1900 before, and, uh, we adapted, we put it on the ground in a safe fashion. I hope you enjoyed this one, I'm sweating like crazy right now. <laughs> ah, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.